This video is for section 6.1, Organizing the Elements. The learning goal is to be able to understand the historical development of the periodic table organization of the elements. Let's take some notes on that learning goal. Understand how the periodic table came to be. Early chemists, such as Lavoisier, put elements into groups based on their similar properties. In 1869, Russian scientist Dmitry Mendeleev published a table that sequenced elements by increasing atomic mass. In addition, his table grouped elements with similar properties. This system allowed Mendeleev to leave blank spots in the table for elements that had not yet been discovered, but must exist because of patterns in the atomic masses. The modern periodic table that sequences elements by their atomic number instead of atomic mass was initiated by English scientist Henry Moseley in 1914. It has been refined by other scientists as new elements have been discovered. Here are some vocabulary words that apply to the periodic table. First, the word group. A group is a column of elements in the periodic table. And elements that are in the same group have similar properties. So the columns are called groups. The next word is period. A period is a row of elements in the periodic table. Next, periodic law. Elements are sequenced by increasing atomic number, but they're positioned so that elements with similar properties are in the same column of the table. So the elements in the periodic table are not just written in one row that goes out to like 112. Instead, the elements are placed in multiple rows so that elements with similar properties are able to be lined up in columns. Here is the periodic table. It shows 117 elements. This periodic table has seven periods, which are numbered down the left side. This periodic table has many groups, which are the columns. You'll notice that the periodic table on the front wall, as well as the one that we use in our book, do not look exactly like this. And the reason is that this drawing is so wide, it wouldn't easily fit on a page. To make the periodic table fit on a page of a book, this section of elements is printed below the chart, like this. But please realize that this row of 14 elements is really in period 6. And this row of 14 elements is really in period 7. Also, these elements fit in between here and here. So just because it's printed like it lines up in this column here, the elements printed down below are not actually in the same groups as are indicated up above these columns. Observe that there are seven periods, which are the rows. These correspond to the fact that there are seven principal energy levels for electrons. Observe that there are 18 groups, which are the columns, when those 28 elements are printed below the chart. The 18 groups corresponds to the fact that within a principal energy level, sublevels S, P, and D can hold a maximum of 18 electrons. The groups are numbered in three different ways at the top of the column. There are red numbers, black numbers, and even Roman numerals. In our class, we're going to use the United States way to number the columns, which are the red numbers. For example, 1a, 2a, 3b, 4b, and so on. For example, if I ask you where is hydrogen located in the periodic table, you could say it's in period 1 and in group 1a. Or if I ask you where is silicon located in the periodic table, you can say that it is in period 3 and in group 4a. Groups 1a through 7a are collectively called representative elements. Group 8a, the very last column, is called the noble gases. The groups with the letter b are called the transition metals. There are three major classes of elements, and these classes are based on the properties of the elements. First is metals. These are elements that readily form positive ions are generally good conductors of heat and electricity, are generally shiny, and are generally malleable. 
Malleable means that the substance can be squeezed into a flat sheet. Nonmetals are elements that don't readily form positive ions. They're generally poor conductors of heat and electricity, and they're generally liquid or gas at room temperature. Metalloids are elements that have some of the properties of metals and some of the properties of nonmetals. For example, maybe they're shiny but not malleable, or maybe they're moderate conductors of electricity. When you look at the chart in the back of your book, you can use the color coding to know if an element is a metal, nonmetal, or metalloid. In this drawing, all of the yellow boxes show the metals. The green boxes are the metalloids, and the blue boxes are the nonmetals. Here are some check for understanding questions. Use the periodic table in the back of your textbook to answer each question. I'll give you some time to do these, and then we'll discuss them. This concludes the lesson about the development of the periodic table.